Hey, confirmation guys. I'm so excited to see you guys again, kind of. Well, I am in my office and the spirit of youth group is back and it's for sixth through 12th graders. It's happening Wednesday nights. This is not confirmation, but it's just a fun way to connect with people and you guys are invited to come. So it's at 7.30 right after lunch services goes to 8.45. So I hope to see you guys tonight or next week. Anytime, I'm super excited to see you guys. So we're going to dive back into the who and the how, talking about God and science. So let me ask you some questions to start off. Do you believe in apples or basketballs? Okay. Do you believe in squirrels or pizza? Do you believe in spaceships or YouTube? Okay, these are terrible questions, right? Obviously, you believe in both of those. Like, they all exist. That makes sense. Last week, we talked about another question that's just as silly. Do you believe in science or God? Both. Yes, right? Okay, last week we said that sometimes in science class, ideas and questions come up and feel like they're at odds with our faith in God. And when we try to, as we try to sort that out, we sometimes feel like we have to pick between God and science. But we discover that you really shouldn't have to choose because science, when it first began, was the study of how God's world works. And God, he's the who behind it all. So if we approach science knowing God as the creator and the designer of all, we can feel free to learn, argue, and talk about how exactly he did it through science. Because the how is really a pretty amazing thing. All thanks to science, we can understand that God designs things like velocity, combustion, aerodynamics, and atmospherical pressure, and how they work. And you guys probably learned about that in science class. And because we understand how all those work, we can build cool stuff like rockets. And then when we build rockets, we can see, see them from planets in our space where we can explore the whole solar system, even whole galaxies. And when we see the vastness of the universe and the smallness of the tiny little planet we call Earth, we can understand even more about the greatness and the incredible creativity of God. That's how science, the how, helps us know the God, the who. So you see when we approach science asking both how things work and who designed them, we can end up being more in awe of God and who he is than ever before. When we learn and think about how God created everything, it's pretty amazing. So that's how studying the how can actually help increase our love and awe for the God, the who, who designed it all. So as we study God and creation, we can and should become more and more amazed at the artist who made all of it. Okay, but when it comes to science, our problem is that not everyone talks about things from that perspective. In fact, if you go to a public school, teachers aren't even really allowed to teach from that perspective. For most parts, in science class, you're going to only learn about the how, but never the who, ever. And sometimes people actually use the how to tell you that there isn't a who. They tell you science can't prove God exists, so he must not exist. And that's when things can get really confusing really quickly. So what side do you choose? If you can't prove something through science, like the existence of God, does that mean that it's not true? Did we evolve from a common ancestor? Did the universe begin with a big bang? Are we all just results of natural accidents? Well, the good news is that God gave you a brain and the ability to think for yourself. So today we're gonna to talk about the perspective you might hear the perspectives you might not hear in school. So we're going to see that science might actually be able to tell us how something happens, but not the whole story. And we want the whole story. So last week we looked at Genesis 1, 1, the beginning of the whole Bible. The very first thing the Bible says is this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible doesn't exactly tell us how that happens, how he created every single little detail, but that's not really the point. The point is who, and that was God. And we said last week, every scientist wonders how, but they don't always wonder who. Aha! They always wonder how, but not who. That was also true with a guy named Charles Darwin. Darwin was a brilliant biologist in the 1800s who studied animals and nature. He was fascinated with questions like, how did all these things get here and where did it all come from? And he actually published a book around 1859 called On the Origins of Species. In it, he talks about how some of his ideas and how we all got here. Here's the problem. Darwin wants to know how things got here, but he really didn't believe that there was a who in it all. In the end, he's missing some really important details. 
So here's how it happened. In the 1830s, Darwin spent time on the Galapagos Islands, and he visited the islands. He realized that the animals are just a little bit different from the island to island. Maybe the same species of birds on one island with slightly different color or had slightly different beaks from the specific same species of bird on another island. For those observations, he came up with a theory he called natural selection. You guys might have heard of it before where he supposed that maybe whole species of animals could change or evolve over time in small ways to better adapt to their environment. But then Darwin proposed something that, to this day, causes a lot of controversy. He proposed that these changes he observed in animals could go well beyond small things like beaks or color. He proposed that maybe animals could change in big ways over time. He thought that maybe animals could even evolve into other animals, and he suggested that we humans aren't actually anything special. He thought that we might have been simply evolved from other animals that lived before us. And here's the really big problem with that. He proposed that humans may have simply evolved by chance instead of being purposely created by God. You see, Darwin was trying to understand the how without knowing the who. And that, like many people who love science but don't know the guy behind it all, is why Darwin got off track. Because the Bible makes it very clear where we came from, and it was definitely not by a random chance. Instead, creation is filled with God's intentional design and purpose. So, in the first chapter of Genesis, right after God clears up who did it, the Bible gives us an idea about the creation of everything. And God is amazing. He spoke and stuff appeared. Light, water, land, plants, animals, and you read it and you can't help but being astounded by the powerful and amazing God that we have. After nearly every day of creation, the Bible says the same thing, and God saw that it was good. Genesis 1, 9, 12, 18, 25, look it up. But just when you think he's done, the Bible slows down and gets a little more specific with God's last and most important creation. So go ahead and pop out your Bibles and read Genesis 1, 26 through 28 with me. You can pause it if you need to. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every li living thing that moves on earth. God created human beings to reflect his image. Later in Genesis 2, 7, the Bible says that God took the first man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. At the end of the day that God created humans, do you know what the Bible says? God looked at his creation and saw that it was very good. Guys, we were very good. He also was so personable. He breathed into to create life in us. That's the Holy Spirit, by the way. He did not do that with anyone else. Everything else, he just spoke it in. But he had a personal connection with us. He actually touched the ground, picked it up, and breathed into it. That's amazing. That shows that we are set apart. Now, that's a very different picture than we get from Darwin when it comes to figuring out how we got here. Here, we don't see that human beings showed up on the earth by chance. We see that we were created by God on purpose and for a purpose. Darwin wants to know how we got here. But by leaving God out of it, he was missing one of the biggest pictures. Because you see, science may have answered how? Dang it, sorry. Who? <laughs> God, who we? Because you see, science may have asked how we get here, but God tells us why. From the beginning, we were different from the rest of creation on purpose. We were created in God's own image. He breathed into us. Just, he didn't do that with anyone else. We're different. You are different because you were created to know God, to love him, and to live out the story that he has for your life. And that purpose is what makes you different from the rest of God's creation. And it's something that science without God can't tell you. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. So what do we do with Darwin? Well, we do with Darwin what we do with all of science. We learn about it and we study it, but always remember that there's a bigger picture just to how the world works. And the bigger picture is who, dang it, who, ha, huh, who <laughs> created us and why? So if you really love to dig into this stuff, then dig. I mean, feel free. Research all you want. I am I love to do that too. Research and learn and study the how questions. But don't forget the who and the why behind everything. Because remember, science may ask how we got here. 
But only God can answer why you're here. Why are you breathing? Why your life matters? And that's the answer you can only find when you know the who behind it all. So no matter what, don't ever forget who created you. Don't ever forget that you were created differently. And don't ever forget that you were created by God on purpose and for a purpose. And that is very, very good. So I want you guys to keep thinking about this. Research. I love science. It's great. And the amazing thing is that it goes together. The how and the who. So I'm excited to keep talking about this. Go to the Google form, fill that out, and hopefully I get to see you at youth group sometime. All right, guys. Bye.